getting in the face of America, no matter what happens. Never admit that you're wrong. Never admit that you're part of the problem. Always attack, attack, attack. And that explains why Trump is going up, up, up. He's the only one on the political stage that's saying one word about the dangers of Islam. You know, I am doing a Teddy book, my dog Teddy. It's coming out in May. It'll be totally different than anything I've ever published. Mainly pictures of this little guy and me, me feeding him this and that, bicycling, all sorts of happy stuff. But I've written it so that it, I hope it becomes a classic, not just a little, you know, hallmark dog book. I try to put some duende in it, some soul, some me, some humanity. And in it, I mention in passing that a neighbor says you can judge a man by how he treats dogs. And I conclude the opening to that book with a little statement about how Muslims treat dogs. And he said, you're kidding. I didn't know that. I said, you didn't know that Islam and dogs are not co uh, cooperative or, or, shall I say, compatible? No, he said, no, no, that. I said, you know that Muslims hate dogs? He said, come on. So I put together for you a little list of things about how Muslims treat dogs. You forgot the case back in uh, Minneapolis in 97 to start with when a Somali cab driver kicked a blind person out with a seeing eye dog screaming, no dog, no dog, get out, get out. Threw the blind woman out of the cab. And to this, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which many consider to be the Muslim Mafia, according to a book that was put out, CAIR replied by pointing out that the saliva of dogs invalidates the ritual purity needed for prayer. Close quote. There are many other cases. I have them in my hand. How about how Muslims treat women? You think that they like women? You think they treat women as equals? First of all, they put them in med medieval tents. What man would put his wife in a tent that covers every part of her body, who respects women. They treat them worse than they do a camel. Now, when I say to you there's a clash of civilizations and that war is coming, you could say I'm crazy, but if you open your eyes, you realize the war is here. And only a, a, a lunatic, a psychotic who hates the country, would bring in millions of men of military age from Syria into this country at a time like this. This is the same insanity that you would see if it was 1939 after Hitler had invaded surrounding nations and then if a president got up and said in order to be nice to the growing German threat we're gonna bring in more Germans and learn how to live with them because we need to get to know the good Germans and you say to them wait a minute if you're bringing in millions of Germans how do you know which ones of them are members of the Nazi party we don't care we will vet them how can you vet them when they have fake passports well don't tell us about that we need them to come in to vote for a Democrat this is what's going on. In other words, this entire administration is committing treason and sedition, in plain English. But we're not living in sane times, are we? We're living in insane times where the doxies of the left, the religious doxies of liberalism, are trumping, sorry to use the word, sanity and reality. Sanity and reality are being trumped by the stupidity of the left. We have evil at our doorsteps, and we have an administration that is either blind to this evil or is collaborating with this evil. But it does not matter which of the above statements is factually correct. All we as a people know is that no one is protecting us from this evil. We know that. We know that by how? We know it by San Bernardino. We know it by the fact that those subhumans who conducted that massacre were admitted into this country because DHS failed us. And Obama, instead of firing the head of the Department of Homeland Security, let that, that, that loser go out on the, on the, uh, the warpath against anyone who criticized him. He mumbled his way through the media over the next three days, and then they, they put him back where he belongs, in a back room somewhere. He is put there to do nothing. We have the bravest men in the, in the world the bravest and, and most superior fighting force in the world being led by sissies. We have police being led by sissies in America who know what to do to control the cities. We have an FBI that could break doors in and yank them out by their filthy noses. Bravest men and women you could imagine being controlled by sissies. The country has been sissified, to use an overly used and under, underly used word. But that's not the real reason that these brave men are being controlled. 
It's not the sissification factor. It is, in my opinion, an infiltration factor. When you see a slaughter like we saw, a massacre in San Bernardino, and the next day Muslim hate groups posing as uh, protectors of the Muslim people go out there and start attacking America, saying ba you're basically responsible for what happened owing to your policies, uh, don't, uh, we've got to report Islamophobia. They know the game very well. They learned it from the ACLU. They learned it from Al Sharpton, in my opinion. They learned it from Jesse Jackson. They learned how to bully everyone into submission. And so the FBI is afraid of them. CIA is afraid of them. Military is afraid of them. Police are afraid of them. Where does this end unless we stand up to these bullies? Does it end like the Yazidi girls? Oh, that can't happen here. Why, are you kidding? That can't happen here. Don't be crazy, savage. That's lunacy. That's paranoia. That's right-wing paranoia. It can't happen here. Really, and San Bernardino couldn't happen here either. And the Boston Marathon bombing by two Muslims couldn't happen here either, right? And 9-11 couldn't happen here, right? And all the other hundreds and hundreds of Muslim attacks that were thwarted by our government, so they say, couldn't have happened here either, right? But they are happening here. Why? For the exact reasons I just said to you. Because the brave men and women who are in these agencies, they could stop the next one to probably a 99th percentile of, uh, of let us say, up to the 99th percentile. All they got to do is preemptively arrest the vermin who they're tracking before they kill us. They can't. Why can't they? Ah, civil rights. Ah, yes. The sacred cow of civil rights. I forgot about that. Well, let me remind you of something about civil rights. Civil rights laws were written for a civil society. Without a civil society, you cannot have civil rights laws. They were written for another time. They're not written for a time of... Muslim violence and Islamic terrorism. Without a civil society, you can have no rights at all because you'll be dead. What good is civil rights laws if you're not alive? So what are you saying, Savage? Suspend uh, civil rights laws? No, I'm not Abraham Lincoln. I'm not a, a hero of Obama who suspended habeas corpus. Not at all. I'm not a, a, a saying what Lincoln would do. Lincoln, uh, you know, the great hero of Obama, suspended habeas corpus. He arrested journalists. You didn't know that, did you? He arrested journalists. Check it out. It's actually in my book, Government Zero, based on facts, not on rhetoric. Lincoln was a dictator, a fascist dictator during the Civil War. Why am I telling you all of this? You figure it out. I'll be right back. Savage. I just don't want to talk about this this threat right now. The girls screaming, the uh, the Yazidis and the little girls. Uh, anyone who watches that, they're getting incensed. They want to know why Obama's not bombing ISIS. They want to know why Hillary's not mentioning the rape of these little girls. They want to know why the National Organization for Women is not mentioning the greatest travesty against women in our lifetime, ongoing on an industrial level, rape of young, young girls. They want to know why the UN, filled with those useless idiots, is saying virtually nothing. They want to know. They don't know the answer yet. 21 years I've been on the radio giving you the answer as to why liberalism, the mental disorder, will kill all of us. It's killing us right in front of our eyes. Killing the culture for sure, right? Isn't that what's going on? Isn't that what you're screaming about? Isn't that why you feel lost? Don't you, isn't that what's freaking you out, that the culture's being decimated? A homicide is being committed against American culture? Obama has committed homicide against our borders and against our culture? But the economy for the very rich has never been better. How is that possible? That's the, you know, that's the structural problem that we have. We keep hearing that the economy is bad for the people down below. But the people on the top have never done so well. I mean, Zuckerface is doing well. Gates is doing well. He's doing well enough to give away billions of dollars. Right? All of the big guys with billions of dollars have never done better. Well, triple Dutch, triple Irish taxation... You know, Apple's never done better. Google's never done better. Hey, if you got your company headquartered in Ireland and you can uh, keep 70% of your profits overseas and not pay your 39% fair, percent fair share or give Jerry Brown his 15%, what could be better? As long as you fund their campaigns, you can get away with virtually anything. That's called homicide, the homicide of reality, if you want to put it to you that way. So people are, are very upset because no one's representing them. No one's representing them. There's no politician other than Donald Trump who even comes near representing their fears and their concerns and their, their dreams for that matter. 
And that's why he's soaring. And that's why Hillary is falling like a dead blimp. She's like, his, you know, the old song, Led Zeppelin. She is a Led Zeppelin. It's very agitating times, i got to tell you. It's not a time to have a great time right now. It's like nothing's really changed and everything's changed, right? I mean, the sky is blue, the clouds are white. Am I the only one who feels this? There's something wrong with me? Should I see a therapist? Should I get medicated for the first time in my life? I mean, aren't things just coming up roses? Isn't Obama doing great for America? Is there something wrong with me? Yesterday we talked about uh, uh, Tourette, remember? That was a good show. I just slipped into it because it was a topic that had come up on TV, and I was interested in it. I knew nothing about it. I thought that was a fascinating show. It helped me in a certain way with my own issues. I swear to God, it's not like I have Tourette. I know that. But who doesn't have issues in their life that they've dealt with their whole life? And when you get older, you want to hear something a little, a little secret for those of you younger? The things that you think were not that important when you were younger that you buried, they're going to come back when you're older. They don't go away. They come back. Did you know that? People don't understand this. Unresolved problems that you, have, that you think you moved past or buried, they're never buried. They come back up to the surface as you get older and you have time to think about them. So you kind of got to resolve them. Savage. It is the Savage Nation, and I read a story about a small army that is fighting the Islamic State to protect their people, the Assyrian people. You say, well, who cares about that? I want you to listen to it very carefully, and I want you to understand how cynical and how useless Hillary Clinton is as a mouthpiece for women. She is a disgrace to women themselves, a disgrace to not talk about the rape and the murder of young girls in the Middle East by ISIS. And we have um, a speech from one of the survivors who spoke before, of all places, the U.N. Security Council, of the ordeal that she endured while the Islamic State used her as a sex slave. She said rape was used to destroy women and girls and to guarantee that these women could never lead a normal life again. The terrorists raped Taha until she passed out. The sadistic vermin, the subhumans, the untermenschen in ISIS captured this little girl in August 2014 as they were raging across Iraq and Syria, and Obama fiddled while Syria burned. And they did things that I can't even read on this show to this girl. They separated the girls from their parents. as the as they, I, Look, there's a video of it. Someone captured, a, uh, got a secret video out. I put it up on michaelsavage.com, and you hear these girls screaming as they're separated out from their mothers and fathers to be used as sex slaves by these vermin, these subhumans, who should be torn in pieces, by the way, when they're captured. But don't get me started on what's appropriate here. Please don't get me started on... You know, as I watch this video of the girls crying and screaming as they're being pulled away from their parents over the weekend, I got so enraged that I said, this is going on in the year 2015, while Mark Zuckerberg is worrying about how to make another billion dollars tomorrow, while Barry Obama is wondering how we can humiliate the Republicans tomorrow, while Hillary Clinton, the liar... The liar of liars is Hillary Clinton, the worst of them all. Not a word about the women being raped in the Middle East. She represents women. A cockroach would represent womanhood better than Hillary Clinton for ignoring this rape. In our time, kidnapping, rape, slavery. Some fem females are sold for weapons or for just $10 or 10 cigarettes, said activist Kadir Damle, who interviewed numerous Yazidis. He showed me a letter and said, this shows any captured woman will become Muslim if 10 ISIS fighters rape her. They're not at war. Nah, they're not at war with the West. They're not at war with everything decent on earth. The terrorist 11 friends raped her as well. Well, who's fighting back? You? You, you liberal progressive vermin? You, you liberal progressive rats who care nothing about anybody but your own advancement? Robert De Niro, the great actor. Why do I bring him up? I think about him a lot. I think about how tough this man really is and how useless he is for the people of the world who are really suffering. I think of all of these false progressives in Hollywood who pretend to care about the downtrodden and say and do nothing about the kidnap, murder, and slavery going on right in front of their eyes in the Middle East. Nothing. Zero. Who's fighting them? Well, here's the thing. There's a small army fighting the Islamic State to protect their own people. And it started with only 12 men. And most of the men are older men, 50, 60, 70 years old. 
I could not believe.